opportunity um, to understand more about your truth, the word. We ask that you would illumine our hearts, help us to understand and to receive it. Please fill Pastor with your spirit, give him power and clear thinking. And uh, we want you to know we love you. We look forward to what you'll do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, amen. Matthew chapter 6, again, a famous passage, and I know I say that all the time, but I guess in my mind, the whole Bible is very famous, but Matthew 6 is very famous uh, for prayer. It's for forgiveness. It's for giving, and it's also for fasting, and today we're going to talk about successful fasting. Uh, I've been talking uh, recently about preparing for fasting and thinking about fasting, and uh, I do want you to know that fasting is something that God expects of His children. God literally expects it. Now, if I raise, I want a, hand, a raise of hands. Who prayed this week? Who has prayed this past week? Go ahead and show me your hand if you've prayed. Everybody's prayed. Have you prayed? I sure hope so. Even, she's prayed. I mean, even the little kids have prayed. That's awesome, right? Praise the Lord that we're worshiping God through prayer. This is something we're called and commanded to do. Uh, we've all prayed. Now, if I ask for a show of hands, and I won't, about fasting, do you guys think it would be 99% that didn't fast? Probably. Think about it. Now, prayer and fasting is something we're commanded to do by God. It's a method of worship. It's designed to help us to grow spiritually, to be more successful in our Christian life. And uh, we're talking about fasting today. And uh, there's many instances of fasting in the Bible. I'm going to keep it simple. I keep misspelling words up here, guys. So I'll keep it real simple today. Fast. When's the last time you fasted? Don't answer that out loud. Answer it in your heart. God has a godly purpose for that. Uh, in Matthew 6, and we covered a little bit of this a week or two ago, in dealing with prayer and forgiveness about how to pray. And it's interesting because he, he shows us how prayer is worship, how giving of your money and using the, the money, the finances that God gives you is part of worship. And I do have to tell you also fasting is worship. Withholding the things that you desire or withholding yourself from the things even that you need to seek God is a form of worship. Most of the time we think of worship, we just think of uh, 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 lifting your arms or singing to God, but prayer is, is a big aspect of worshiping God. You're humbling yourself. You're putting yourself in position under His authority. You're seeking Him. And it's kind of the same way with fasting. In fact, I think fasting is a bigger method of worship, but we just don't see it. And it ought not to be seen. I do want you to see. In fact, in this chapter, verse 3, Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, He says, But when thou doest alms, when thou doest alms. What's he saying? Uh, there is a place for alms. Now, alms, for those that don't know, uh, is not your tithe. It's not the offering. The tithe is the tenth, uh, the first tenth of whatever God gives you. It belongs back to God. Then there's the offering. That's what you give to God. That's above the tenth. And then the alms are what you give to someone else in need. And, you know, the Bible tells us that we should work with our own hands, that uh, we, we can give to them that need, and uh, God can use you to redistribute wealth. Health. Not in a communist way, right? but in a Christian way, God can give you extra things so you can give to those that are in need, so that those that are praying to God and, and looking for a miracle, it comes at your hand, but yet He says when you do your alms, not let your left hand know what your right hand doeth. Now, in my, my household, my wife is left-handed, uh, so when I try to be a blessing to somebody, uh, if it's visible face-to-face, -face, I say, don't give me the glory, give God the glory. Don't repay me, this is not a gift, this is from God. Sometimes I'll just tell them outright, uh, somebody wants you to have this, uh, and it's from God. I'll even try to take myself out of that position because I can in ministry. I'm like, listen, uh, somebody's put this in my hand to give to you, and I want you to have it, uh, to, but glorify God. And, you know, alms are an opportunity to be uh, an answer to somebody else's prayer, to be a, poor, a part of that miracle. Then we see, he says in verse 5, jump ahead to that, and he says, and when thou prayest, now he says, you're going to give alms. 
He says, and you're going to pray when thou prayest, same way. Now look, there's a time and a place for public prayer. We do it here. We have congregational prayer. This is very important. In fact, uh, our, our, uh, my prayer is that our prayer meetings on Wednesday get stronger in prayer for the glory of God. But uh, there's a place for public prayer. But here he says, don't be like the guy that stands in front of everybody. Oh God, I've done everything right and I'm so good and I do it. I'll be like the guy that's humble and lowly. And why? Because we pray to God in secret. He rewards us openly. And both of these, she says, don't be like the hypocrite. Don't be like the guy that just does it to be seen of men. Why? Because they already have their reward. They were seen of men. They got what they desired. They've accomplished that. Our goal ought to be from the heart. It ought to be different. It ought to be for spiritual reasons, right? Uh, so giving your time and talent and treasure and prayers are expected from Christians. But look what he says in verse 16. Matthew 6, verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, now Jesus is giving a commandment here. When you fast, he doesn't say if you feel like it or if that's for your lifestyle, if you can get around it, he says you will. And when you fast, let's do it according to his will. What's he say? Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you would uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit right now, Lord. I pray that you would get all the glory from what's preached this morning. Lord, I pray that you would quicken the spirits of your children that are here, Lord. I pray that you would help us to leave here as better Christians. Lord, I pray that you would help us to realize maybe we need to fast for soul winning. Maybe we need to fast for our family. Maybe there's things in our life that we haven't achieved victory yet, and it's because we haven't come to you fasting and praying. Lord, I pray that you would teach us something this morning, and I trust that you'll answer it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They have their reward. Oh, I'm so tired. I can barely move. Oh, I think I'm going to die any moment now. Why? What's going on? Are you, you have cancer? Are you heart attack? Are you, is it a stroke? Is it asthma? P food poisoning? Oh, brother, I've separated myself to fast. I'm becoming stronger spiritually. Thou hypocrite. Look, you live with a, a wife, most of you are a husband, or with family, and you teenagers, even this applies. If you're going to fast, tell your mate so they don't put a hot bowl of food in front of you and, <laughs> you know, or so they don't think you're avoiding them or something. But uh, it, the goal of fasting is to be secret and to do it unto the Lord, to make sure you're doing it for God's glory, not as a hypocrite, not just to be seen of men. Remember the Pharisees, they fasted how many times? Twice in a week. I wonder how many of us, let's be honest, have fasted twice in a year. And most of them weren't even saved. Some of them were, but most of the Pharisees were not even saved. Listen, fasting is a personal choice for personal spiritual growth, and we get it from God. We're petitioning God. We're seeking God. Uh, we want His attention, not the world's attention. If I want your attention, there's a million other ways to do it, but when I use God's name to get your attention, look at me, look at how holy I am, because prayer was the same way. You're praying to be seen of men. Alms was the same way. Did I tell you how much money I gave brother so-and-so because he was in need? I, I helped fix his problem. I'm the one. Yeah, you got, you got your reward. You got your reward. I want a reward from God. We do it in secret, not as the hypocrites. I don't want to be seen of men. I want to be seen of God. I want to be blessed by God. You think about it. I'm going to log into Facebook. You can change your status update, which I don't have Facebook, but you change your status update and it puts on the, 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 fat, the sad face and a famished face. And it says, humble and fasting, in parentheses, behind your name. What's your status, brother? Oh, I'm humble and fasting. Have I told you how humble I am? <laughs> like the preacher that used that joke, he said, I, I wrote a book. It was called The, uh, uh, the, the, most, uh, the 12 Most Humble People in the World. And how I met the other 11, right? <laughs> I'm the most humble guy I know. Well, that's not true. That's not sincere. Well, fasting is a sincere thing. It's from the heart. You should do it. You should fast somehow from something in your life if you want God's blessing on your life. If you want to get His attention. Well, how do we do it? Verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, 
that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Listen, I want God's blessing on every aspect of my life, not just in secret, but openly. And the only way to get an open blessing from God is to do the right things in secret. And God will reward you openly. He says, anoint thy head and wash thy face. If, if you're somebody that puts stuff in your hair, keep putting stuff in your hair. Don't just come in all mad and uh, I need to put on my, my old clothes like a morning. Uh, day. No, just dress like normal, act like normal, put a smile on your face. And it will be hard because you will become weak in the flesh, but that's part of the goal, to become strong in the spirit. If you would go to Luke chapter 2. We want to fast unto God privately and he will reward us openly. I want to give you sort of a fasting spectrum. I want to give you the purposes of fasting also, and also kind of some guidelines. There were three examples in the Bible of men that fasted for 40 days. The first that we see is Moses when he went up to God. Very unique, right? Also Elijah when he went to see God, but he saw all this stuff, but then he hears him in the still small voice. And then Jesus right before his temptation. And I do believe that uh, all, all of those that were 40, like if you're saying, okay, I'm convinced, Brother Fannin, I'm going to fast. I, I want to do it. I want God's blessing on my life. Don't start with a 40-day fast. Don't do it. Start with a one day. Go, go for two or three days. Uh, don't go for a 40-day fast. You say, are you saying it's not possible? No, obviously the Bible says it's possible, but I believe all three of these situations were somehow supernatural or spiritually sustained. We know the Bible says that the spirit quickeneth the Spirit gives life, and I believe that was happening here when Moses was in the mount, in the cloud with God, and he touched not bread or water for 40 days, and he came down and his face was shining. Okay, he was near an energy source of pure life. I believe that the Lord helped sustain him through his fasting, and yet he felt it. I'm not saying he didn't feel the fasting. Uh, same thing with Elijah. He was uh, running from Jezebel, uh, and uh, an angel woke him up and baked him a cake. Uh, ladies, did you hear that? Uh, an angel baked a man a cake. Any, all right, I'm sorry. But the cake was a bread. All right, it wasn't sweet cake. Uh, and gave him a cruise of water. And, it, and he said, you cannot make this journey on your own. And somehow, I, I mean, this is angel food or something special. This was some kind of food because he went 40 days. He saw the Lord and then he went some more. And so he did 40 days. Again, I believe there was supernatural situation. I believe there was a miracle there. And you say, well, I want to fast for 40 days. Well, you will need a miracle. And listen, thank God we serve the God of miracles. But don't make that your first priority in fasting is to achieve a 40-day fast. The Lord Jesus Christ as well, uh, God with us, uh, the Holy Spirit indwelling Him. He is the Son of God that's forever. And guess what? Uh, there's something special when He can fast for 40 days. So don't hold yourself to those standards. I just want to get that out of the way, okay? Too many times we think, man, can I even do it? I don't know how to do it. I want you to see this in Luke chapter 2 where you guys are at. Luke chapter 2, look at verse number 36. We'll show you uh, Anna, a prophetess, will show you her fast in, uh, actually, yeah, verse 36. Luke chapter 2. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of and four years. Okay, so she married a guy. They were married for seven years. He died. Here we are 84 years later. She's been a widow. It says, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Think about it. It's our reasonable service to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with fastings and prayers night and day. What could this little old poor widow do? to help the cause. Let's say she was a prophetess. That doesn't mean that she brought the morning sermon. That means that she preached to those the Word of God that God sent her to and probably got some saved and encouraged others and God used her in many different ways. Uh, but it says here that she served with fastings and prayers. It says in verse 38, and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise, this was as talking about Simeon, unto the Lord and spake of him, who's that? The Lord Jesus Christ, to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. How was she a prophetess? She spake of Jesus to all those that came to the temple seeking redemption. She, I don't know how old she was. She must have been over 100 years old. 
little old lady serving in the temple by fasting and praying and everybody had probably known her. Mom knew her. Dad knew her. The children knew her. Grandpa probably knew her. She's always been there fasting and praying and uh, teaching people, the, helping people and encouraging people and praying for people's needs. And when anybody came seeking redemption, she preached Jesus Christ. That He was there. The Messiah had come. He was born. God with us. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Guys, there's so much stuff I could talk about with fasting. Uh, I do want to keep it very light this morning. I promised you I'd give you the fasting spectrum. Uh, and I believe that you can uh, go too far with anything. Fast to feast is your spectrum. In the middle is eat. You could call it fast, fat, and full, but we won't go there, all right? Because <laughs> fat's good in the Bible. So on one side of the spectrum is fasting. This is withholding yourself. Eating is just kind of an average day, isn't it? Now, we have some feasts in our church, and thank God for the fellowship and feasting that we get to do, but this is not and should not be an everyday thing. I was thinking about having some of the children draw me some, some big pink donuts and a slice of pizza up here, but uh, how do I do that? That would be a terrible thing to do to you while I'm preaching about fasting. We are still having ice cream tonight, though. So if you're going to start fasting, I'd recommend tomorrow. Okay, uh, that being said, so fasting, eating, and feasting, there's a spectrum here. This applies to all areas of your life. And um, you could also call it to abstain. I think I should change pens. Is this the right pen I want? That'll probably work. Uh, you call it from uh, abstain to allow to abundance. If you get the picture. I'm completely abstaining, or I'm allowing, as I always do, or we have something in abundance. I do want you to realize that uh, you don't, uh, that, that allowing or eating is not a sin, and feasting is not always a sin. Uh, we could talk about drinking, or withholding from drinking even water, or just juice, or soda, or coffee. Now I'm really hitting on some nerves, right? Uh, to allowing it, well, I'm just an average coffee drinker. I only drink one pot a day. Rarely do I drink two. <laughs> just joking. I have uh, uh, taken that back. I have a big coffee cup. My wife gave me. It says the Baptist drug of choice. So I'm. I, I don't want to do drugs. I'm, I'm cutting back on my coffee. I don't know what your. Uh, maybe it's soda or you know energy drinks. But then there's abundance. I, I got to stop and get five of those super Starbucks a day. No, that's an abundance. That's feasting. That's drunkenness. In fact. There comes a point where you're out of balance and that's all the way over on the other spectrum when you're in lust or sin and your desire is just given all the way over. And if you find yourself in anything in life where you say, I'm just doing too much. Maybe it's chewing bubble gum. Maybe it's chewing bubble gum. You say, you know what? I'm going to cut back. You know what? I'm going to stop and just make sure that I'm in control and not the stuff. I want to make sure that God's in control and not the flesh. That's the goal of fasting is, uh, is really discipline. Discipline. We want to be a disciple, then we have to be disciplined to learn uh, the doctrine and to live the doctrine. And Proverbs 23, 20 says, Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. That's gluttony. He says, For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. We don't want to be on this side. There's a time for having a feast and a celebration. It's not over here, though. You see, there is a spectrum, and it's important to take yourself, to stay in the middle and find yourself over here at times, but only for God's glory. I've said it before, fasting without prayer is just called dieting. All of you actually fasted last night. Well, I take that back. I know for a fact our baby did not fast last night. Boy, every hour she was breaking the fast, right? She was coming and getting some bread. So the little babies, they didn't fast. They were eating in the middle of the night. Uh, Brother Luke, did you eat in the middle of the night? Might have. He's like, I, don't, I sleepwalk and sleep eat. Teenager. I get it. All right. Uh, but so we break the fast in the morning. We stop from withholding food. We usually eat or partake in our coffee. That's my breakfast typically. Or your sausages, your eggs, whatever it is, right? Um, you're in Ecclesiastes 10. Look at verse number 17. This is very important. Blessed art thou, blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. Eating at the right time and eating for the nutrition of your body not to be drunk. There is riotous eating of the flesh. That was last time I was at the buffet with Brother Doug. Boy, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm joking. 
right? But you can imagine somebody just shoveling food and like, or like, give me more. I want some of that. And it's like going to the Brazilian steakhouse. You end up eating a, 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 a riotous eating of flesh. Here he says, eat for strength. Eat with a focus. Eat with a goal, not for drunkenness. That's a, that's a hard thing, especially with the desire and the opportunity of so much food. Go to Psalm 35. Just this week, man, maybe I can find it. This wasn't in my sermon. Somebody sent me a picture. I guess you would call it a meme. Let me see. This was, Oh, yeah. Here it is. I don't know if you guys can even see this. This is a uh, coffee... Coffee ice cream with a shot of espresso in a donut cone. All right, that's a donut cone. That's ice cream, and there's a shot of coffee. I said, only in America. Only in America. What? You're not going to see that in Venezuela, right? I mean, come on. That's got to be $10. I don't know where you got it, but I'm going to find out. I'm just kidding. All right. Maybe we can do that for our next birthday celebration. Listen, the world uses intermittent fasting for health reasons. To pre it's like the world has figured out that the Bible was right, that withholding yourself is good in some ways, that uh, not being a glutton is good in some ways. The world just now figured out that there's science in the Bible, that the Bible was right. The world and science and doctors are now saying, well, you can use intermittent fasting, and you can say, I'm going to eat from 12 to 3 or 12 to 6, and don't eat the rest of the time, and you'll be healthier. You'll prevent disease or you'll overcome disease. I mean, there are a lot of people that have been very sick from certain things, and they withheld eating for long periods, and they were able to overcome, it, let their body restart and kick in and do what they needed to do. I personally have known people that uh, five years after they stopped eating fried chicken, drinking soda, and they went with raw veggies as much as they can and filtered water and changed their life and their health. There's truth in the Bible. There's things for us to learn. Is your food just enough energy to survive until tomorrow? Just enough energy to get me through work? Or is your food just pure corn sugar pleasure? The best that McDonald's has to offer. Whatever Winn-Dixie has on sale this week. Little Debbie cakes? Well, I mean, there it's buy one, get one. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Psalm 35 if you would. The goal of fasting is discipline. The goal of fasting is discipline. You being in control of your body, not your body being in control of you. We have this dilemma in the Christian life. There's the new man. That's the spirit indwelling us, making us all things becoming new, walking with newness of life. And then there's that old man, sin that dwells with me. My flesh wants to do what it wants to do, its desire, and it keeps getting me in trouble. That's the struggle. So the purpose of fasting is to win one for the new man and, and get one up against the old man. Victory over the flesh instead of flesh getting victory over you. Isn't that what the devil wants to do is to use you and your desire and your mind and your body and your tongue and everything else in your life to serve his will instead of the will of the Lord? Discipline. You know, when we have prayers... We're praying about a church building. We're running out of room. We're praying about it. What else should we do? Answer. What else should we do? Fast. Fast. <laughs> Psalm 35. Look at verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned unto mine own bosom. He said, I humbled my soul with fasting. I put the body down. I put the flesh down. Pride is the opposite of humility. Well, fasting helps you fight against pride. Go back to Matthew 6. In Ezra chapter 8, and I love this. Listen, there's so many places we can talk about fasting. I want to keep it real simple. He says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, listen, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of Him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. Lord, show us how to use the things You've given us to Your glory. Lord, please give us the opportunity to be used of You. Lord, uh, help me protect my children and lead them in the right way. Lord, what would You do for the congregation? 
There are congregational fasts. There are many different types of fasts in the Bible. Everything from uh, uh, avoiding warfare or in the middle of warfare or, or after warfare with victory, preparing the temple, preparing to exit, preparing to enter uh, uh, for the loss of a life or a child, uh, to have the birth of a child, just to, ha just to be able to conceive. There are many instances in the Bible for using fasting. Your application is probably different than mine, but you have an application. Do you realize anything that you bring to the Lord in prayer, if it's important to you, and you think it's important to the Lord, it's worthy of a fast. It's worthy of you afflicting your flesh, humbling yourself. I believe you should have fasting goals. I have found personally that when fasting, it's, it's difficult at times to fast in your regular work day. You're often doing many other things. I think sometimes, if you're really serious about fasting, you should do it on your day off. Just as the rest, the Sabbath, was ceasing from your work, I think there's a time in your fast also to consider ceasing from work and taking it as serious as possible. I don't recommend fasting from your family necessarily, but it's important perhaps to get that alone time. Perhaps talking with your spouse and saying, you know, uh, this is on my heart and I, I want to go pray for an hour and I, I really need to be alone and I need your help to, to be able to do this so I can be with the Lord and afflict my flesh and pour out my heart and humble myself and I, I love my family and it's for my family, but I can't do it when kids are hanging on me or knocking on the door making noise. So maybe there's a time for separation during the fast. Uh, didn't Jesus go in the wilderness for the fast? I mean, John the Baptist separated himself. Moses separated himself. I believe ceasing from work during the fast makes it more effective and powerful. And yet, if you say, I don't get a day off, but I'm going to try one day of the week this week that the Lord will bless our soul winning coming up this weekend. I'm, I'm just going to fast. I'm going to afflict myself. I'm going to withhold from what I desire. I, I, in fact, I'll stop coffee. I'll, I'll stop soda. I'll stop pizza. Whatever it is, I, I'm going to dedicate this time for the Lord because I want Him to answer my prayer. If you'll do that, the Lord will reward you openly. This is what fasting is all about. We're not fasting so that we get glory. Remember that. We're fasting so that God gets glory through our situation. And when somebody says, yeah, it is amazing that that, that happened, you say, hey, let me tell you what happened. Now that I'm not fasting, let me tell you, I fasted and prayed for it. And God answered that. And now you become a testimony of what He has done. There's different methods of fasting different details of fasting. I just want to share this quick, and, and I'm almost done. I, I believe it's important to determine in advance what you will or will not do. I normally drink three cups of coffee. I'll drink one. Or I'll drink none. I will drink tea. I will not drink that. I will eat this. I will not. I'll take vitamins, but not. Try to cross that bridge in advance so that you're not stuck in the middle of the day with a potential compromise. And then maybe perhaps you well, I guess it's okay, and you do it, and then the devil's trying to discourage you and say, well, you might as well give up. You messed up on that one. I would encourage you to have goals in advance of what you will not do, but also what you will do. I will pray as much as I can. I will start my day this way, or I'll try to read ten chapters today, or I will commit three verses to my memory for God's glory. Whatever it is, have some goals. Have some goals. There's different methods of fasting all throughout the Bible. Spiritual is, I think, one of the primary aspects that we see, and it's to revive. It's to revive. You're looking for something from God, you're looking for strength for God, and there's a spiritual aspect to it. There's also a sorrowful and that's often to repent. It's often to repent. Lord, I, I, I'm confessing the sins of my nation. Lord, I, I need your help. I've done wrong. Lord, I want to I reset. I want to get back. I want to please you. There's also, and we won't cover it too much today, there's also a selfish, selfish fasting. And that's just for recognition. You think of the Pharisees. Why did they fast twice in a week? For recognition. Why did uh, uh, Jezebel call a fast of the sons of Belial when they were trying to take 
uh, 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 the vineyard. Why? Because they, they're, they're just proclaiming it, right? So they're, they're going to get, oh, look at us. We're all fasting. We're the holy ones, right? They're doing it for their own selfish recognition. Spiritual is for growth. You want to revive. You want to get better. You want to improve. Sorrowful is I've messed up. Uh, I'm repentant. I need your help. We see this in the ones of war. We see this before the war. We see it during the war. There's a lot of different fasts. And again, I want to keep it as simple as possible. What's interesting, the last half of Matthew 6, what we're about to read, deals with the reward from God. Where our treasure ought to be. You're in Matthew 6, look at verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay out for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, if I asked you right now, you say, I love, fill in the blank, coffee, donut, I love Legos, uh -oh. <laughs> busted, <laughs> computers, Facebook, soda, games, silver collection, I love recognition at work for a good job. I love just physical exercise. I, I love the physical relationship, uh, spending extra time on hobbies, whatever, whatever you really have a desire for sometimes, maybe you should just say, hey, let me get in control of that before it controls me, causes me to be out of balance. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Fasting is for a reward from God, not for men. Let your treasure be the godly things. Let your treasure be how you worship God. Treasure your worship to God and your relationship with God and be successful thereby. Giving and prayer and fasting. When you give over these things, your desires to the Lord, He will reward you openly. Continue in the chapter, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. He's saying get a godly focus in goal. Clear up. Uh, it's to fix what you see and what you desire and, uh, in your flesh to get control over your eye and your body. Verse 23. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. He says fix that problem. Do it now. Use prayer. Use fasting, use sacrifice. Why? Verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either, either hate the one and love the other, else you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Fasting is to help you to refocus from things, from money, from work, from job, and refocus back to God. Don't despise the ministry that God's given you. Be thankful for what He's given you. You ever say, well, I can't fast. Well, will I starve unto death? No, but you will become weak in the flesh. I promise you. This is meant to happen. You will become weak in the flesh. But if you do it right, you will become strong in the Spirit. What's he saying in verse 25? Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. He says, your life and your responsibility on earth is not all of, don't weep over food and clothing and money and resources and houses. Don't weep over those things. Weep unto God. You take care of your treasure with God. Get your heart right with God. And He will take care of the rest of that stuff. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what He told Paul. My strength is made, I'm going to be weak, yeah, but my strength, God's strength, will be made perfect in your weakness. Verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Doesn't He love you a whole lot more than the birds that don't have an eternal soul? Jump ahead to verse 30 and let's finish here. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O oh, ye of little faith? O oh, ye of little faith, he's saying. You don't think I'm going to take care of you? Just come to me. Ask me. Pray fast. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things did the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of. All these things. He knows what you need. The world is after these things. We want to grow in our spiritual man. Here's the goal. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. How do I seek the kingdom of God? Through prayer, through fasting, by not holding on to treasure. Or so, just give it away to somebody that needs it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow 
shall take the thought of the things for itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He says, quit stressing about what you'll put on tomorrow, what you'll eat tomorrow, where you'll live tomorrow, and you be willing to separate yourself from food today instead of worried about what you'll eat tomorrow. But do it in prayer and in humility with the goal to seek God, and you will find Him, and He will reward you openly. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for Your Word. Lord, thank You for teaching us that we should fast. Lord, I pray that You would help us to be faithful in fasting to You so that we can see things change in our life. Lord, I pray that You would help us not to just take this information and file it away and say, yeah, one day, maybe, if. No, Lord, help us to determine in our heart right now that seeking You is worth fasting. That success spiritually is worth fasting. That withholding our physical desire is, is less important than You. Lord, we love You and I thank You for the salvation that You've given us and the ministry that You've given us. Lord, I pray that You would bless our time preaching the Gospel this afternoon. We ask this humbly in Jesus' name. Amen.